Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord of my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When they're dressed in hearts, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives hope to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bound down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers, he upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God will sign for all generations. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. the heart. 
harsh world in which they live. And we know something about this as well. We know about the vulnerability of living in a difficult and a harsh world. We understand this, don't we? We certainly understand this. Certainly we know that the world can be a difficult and a hard place. And if you're going to make it, if you're going to make it, you have to have some treasure, something that you can clutch for dear life that will help you get through it. The things people are holding in the Bible usually represent more than just what is on the surface. For example, the staff that Moses was holding when God called him represented more than his job as a shepherd. Moses picked up that staff 40 years earlier when his dreams for life in Egypt didn't work out and he had to abandon his early hopes of saving the Hebrew slaves. Now he just had a day job as a shepherd. And he used his staff to get him through those days. That staff to which Moses clung day after day was the symbol of his determination to forget about making a difference in an unjust world. It was a symbol of Moses deciding just to take care of himself, nobody else, but just himself. The heel that Jacob clutched during his birth belonged to the other guy, his brother, who always got the breaks. Mom loves you more, right? How many times have we said that or thought that? Mom loves you more. So Jacob held tightly to this treasured symbol of his resolve to hustle a blessing for himself. There are other characters in the Bible. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus hoarded money. Jairus cherished his sick daughter. The woman caught in adultery cherished her sexuality. Paul carried his distinguished profession as a Pharisee with him on the road to Damascus. So clinging to all of their treasures, these men and these women made a fist and shook it in the face of the hard world. And they said, at least I have this one thing to get me through. At least I have this one thing, this treasure that is going for me. And I'll be okay as long as I keep it. I'll be okay as long as I have this one treasure that I want to. So we have this poor widow in today's gospel. And we get to think about what she was holding. We think about today those two copper coins that she pulled from her robe, two small coins, the smallest coins in circulation in Palestine where she lived. Each one worth approximately one one twenty-eighth of what a laborer might expect to earn for a day's work. The King James Version of the Bible calls these coins a mite. Newer translations of the Bible, they call it a penny. And we all know what a penny is. She took these two small coins and she let go of them. She placed them in the temple treasury. She gave them away. They weren't worth much. They weren't worth much at all. Except they re represented everything that she had. 
She had nothing more except these two copper coins. There was nothing left for her after these two coins were gone. Nothing more for her to spend, nothing for dinner that night, nothing for breakfast in the morning, nothing to keep her going. She gave it all. They weren't worth much, but then again, they were worth everything to her. She gave them away. Everything given over in faith to her God. Why would she do this? How could she do this? Could you do this? Could I do this? I don't think I could. But she did. She did because I think she knew that God held her life. That's the only way she could give it all away. It's because she had faith and hope and love that God would hold her life until the very end. Her life in all of its terror as a widow. Her life in all its beauty. She knew that everything was held in God's gracious hands. Everything. Everything in God's hands. Not her hands. In God's hands. So now what about you? If the Bible were telling the story of your life, what would the Bible say about the things that you hold? What do you hold in this life? What have you held in this life? What are you holding in this life? Some of you, I know, are holding on to the hurt that you received a long time ago. You've held it so long that you can't imagine your life without this hurt. And tragically now, that hurt has become for you your treasure. And you will not let that hurt go. Others of you are holding on to your dreams for the future. Or maybe you're holding on to the memories of the past. And you hold on so tightly that you cannot see what God has in store for you today. We are all, each of us, we are all holding on to something ever so tightly. But you know it doesn't matter what you are holding. It doesn't matter what you collect along the way of life. Scriptures are very clear about this. You don't get to keep any of it. You don't get to keep any of it unless the things that you hold are treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven are the only things that you get to keep. Treasures in heaven are things that last for eternity. According to the Apostle Paul, it is the things like faith, hope, and love. These are the only things Paul tells us that will abide. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, love. The only things that will abide in this life. This widow gave out of her poverty. She gave out of the essential substance of what she had, just as Jesus did. And having only what she had to give, she gave it all, everything. And with it, this widow gave her heart as well. She gave her faith. She gave her hope. She gave her love. She gave her heart. You see, above all else, above everything, God has always been more concerned about your heart. God is concerned about your heart. Actually, Scripture doesn't tell us to give up our treasures. Scripture doesn't tell us to do that. Scriptures tell us to stop holding them and to allow God to hold them. 
That is when the miracles will start. For you see, in the hands of God, all our earthly treasures are transformed into eternal testimonies to the power of faith and hope and love. In the hands of God, a slingshot can kill a giant. In the hands of God, a shepherd's staff can part the Red Sea. In the hands of God, a 90-year-old woman can have her first baby. In the hands of God, fishermen who are clinging to their nets who were fishing can now fish for men and women. In the hands of God, persecutors can become apostles. In the hands of God, a few loaves and a couple of fish can feed 5,000 hungry people. In the hands of God, the treasures that you once held so tightly when given over to God can be used to change you and your faith and your hope and your love. And God will use those treasures to change the world. Because everything that you have and everything that you are belong to God. Everything. 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 You too have had the sign of the cross marked on your forehead. And you bear Christ's redeeming love to the world. Everything you have, every single part of you, you use everything to proclaim the very glory of God. So when we come to the altar today, we do not come to the altar with fists that are closed, do we? How do we come to the altar to receive communion? Our hands are open. Our palms are exposed out to the world. And that's how we live our lives of faith, our lives of hope, and our lives of love.